Hi, Abby Jackson. Um, I am the 2022 head coach for Snipers Elite, and I am also the director of recruiting for our whole uh, Snipers Elite organization. Um, I handle all the kids who are of a recruitable age in our program, um, everything from how to write an email to um, going on a college visit, um, sort of interfacing with, with college coaches at, at tournaments and over email and phone. Um, I am currently on the IWLCA board of directors, um, as well as the uh, racial equity task force, which was a, um, a committee formed by the IWLCA in light of all the um, social and, and, and racial issues that, that have been become very public in the country. Um, so that has afforded me to work with and get to know a lot of different coaches under a different context, which has really enriched our relationships. Um, I am from Boston originally. Um, I played at Williams College uh, for four years. I was a three sport athlete and I currently um, coach at Union. Um, I've been there for 11 years. Um, I have coached at a few different places um, during my career, but um, have really made a lot of really great connections with coaches from all divisions, one, two, and three, um, as an athlete and then as a coach. Um, so a lot of connections. And then between, I don't want to take all the credit. I obviously working with Michelle and Catherine um, and, and Sarah and Sumzik, um, we, between the, the group of us, we have a really great sort of bank um, of, of coaches to, that we can, that we can draw from in terms of their opinions and, and sort of their, their comments and, and being able to reach out to different programs and, and sort of see, okay, if this kid, if it's not working out with this program, then maybe we can, we can reach out to this coach, um, and, and get, get, get some feedback, um, from there. So it's been really nice to, to sort of see, see the process from the other side. I'm usually, you know, the, the person that is being handed a roster and now I'm handing out rosters. Um, but it's, it's been a really great experience to sort of, um, it's a great way to get to know all the kids, um, being able to, to, to watch them play and, and see how they are as, as people um, on and off the field, just hanging out in the tent between games, sort of getting a good idea of what kind of personalities everybody has. Um, all that stuff plays into how we guide them during this process. Um, it's not just about lacrosse, it's about um, their overall experience as a student athlete and getting them to the right institution with the right coaching staff that's going to be able, that's gonna vibe with them and, and really allow them to reach their potential as they go through their journey. Typically the way that it starts is I will have a Zoom or potentially a real life meeting now that COVID is hopefully over um, with each team and go over sort of the nuts and bolts of the recruiting process. For the younger players, the freshmen, um, it's more an, a general overview, um, what they should, how they should begin to build their college list. Um, we will utilize all different sources of information, um, several different um, college ranking systems. Um, and I'll just provide links, links to that so they can sort of see like, what does selectivity mean? What does, um, you know, what, what makes a college selective? What makes a college prestigious? Um, and, and where do I as an individual fall in terms of those available colleges? Um, obviously everybody's heard of BC and UNC and Northwestern and everyone wants to go there, but so does everybody else in the, in the lacrosse playing world. So really encouraging the kids to build a diverse and wide list as we begin the process helps us to not only stay organized, but also for the, for the individual player to keep, keep what they need on their list in terms of, you know, what, where do I want to go to school? What kind of environment am I looking for? Am I looking for an urban setting? Am I looking for um, community service? Do I want to go abroad? What do I want to major in? All of those things need to drive the process. So the kid or one of our players making their list based on those things and then using the selectivity and the rankings and things like that as a guide um, sort of sets them up to have a, a, a better experience um, moving forward as we get further along into the more detailed part. Um, 
as they get to be sophomores, we start talking about reaching out to coaches, um, creating an email. Uh, we obviously utilize the IWLCA Connect uh, sport or sports recruits platform. So everybody has a profile. They can keep their uh, transcripts and their highlight videos all on there. We have access to be able to see who kids are reaching out to and who's reaching out to them. Um, so that we kind of keep that in the back of our mind um, to say, all right, well, you know, Jenny Smith is interested in, in UVM because she sent them an email. Let's keep that in mind as we kind of hit the sideline and, and, and perhaps talk to those coaches. Um, we provide each kid with a link to a um, very detailed set of email templates, all different types of emails for all different types of responses, um, responding to a cold email from a coach who saw you play at a tournament, sending your in, an email indicating your own interest to a, a college or a school um, after a tournament or before an event, um, how to how to reach out to a coach to tell them where you're going to be this summer or this fall. Um, thank, you know, emails to thank them for their time and, and their, their knowledge at a, at a camp or a clinic. So all different types of templates that the kids can essentially um, copy and paste and then just add in their own personal information so that all the, all the emails that are coming from our players look the same. They have all the necessary information. We're not missing anything. Um, as a college coach, one of the things that's that's, that's tough when you get an email is if there's no phone number or no, or no club team, or you don't know what number the player is wearing. Um, we want to make sure that we provide the coaches with an easy experience when they deal with us. We want to be organized. We want to put a, a really clear and um, concise foot forward. Um, and we want our, that to sort of run through our players as well. Um, and then as we get towards the end of the process, we're talking about college visits. We're talking about, you know, attending on-campus events. Um, we have a working document that all the players of recruitable age have access to. And it's just basically a huge list of all the camps and clinics um, anywhere, right? Whoever, whether it's coaches that send us emails and say, hey, here's our list of camps, or we just go hunting on the internet and find that information, put it up on the recruiting docs and just periodically remind the players like, hey, check out the recruiting doc or excuse me, the, the recruiting events doc. There's been some new additions. Um, if you're looking to go to Bucknell camp, if you're looking to go to um, High Points running a, running a camp, any place you have to fly, here's, here's the information. Um, there's a Cornell event is happening. Um, so it's, it's easy for them to, to look, find the registration link. It's built right into the, to the events document. Um, and then they kind of just let us know, Here, here's the list of camps I'm going to. Um, and we'll follow up with the coaching staff um, after those events. Once the kids are able to communicate with the coaches directly, um, we just kind of guide them and, and, and help them facilitate that conversation. So we might, a typical phone call or a text message I might receive says, you know, hey, Abby, I just got an email from Coach XYZ. They want me to uh, set up a, a call with them. Um, what do you think some of the, you know, what, what are we going to talk about? Um, which brings me to our next document. We have a, um, a living doc that has all the potential questions that eat, that players should prepare to answer and all the potential questions or possible questions that they might want to consider asking the coaching staff. Um, one of the things as a college coach, you really want to see from, from potential players is can they hold a conversation? Are they really interested in my program? Um, and all that's indicated by the, the quality of the questions that the student athlete is asking the coach during their visit. Um, so we wanna make sure everybody's prepared. Um, essentially, we, as an organization, it, it's a two-way benefit, right? We as an organization are putting our best foot forward and I think it really creates a really positive relationship with coaches because we're always organized and we try to really communicate well and clearly and often. Um, and also providing the, the student athletes that we sort of guide um, with a, a, a clear, and comprehensive um, recruiting process introduction and execution so that we make sure that the, every player ends up at the right school for them. Um, we want to, you know, want to try to avoid, you know, transferring and, and sort of ill-informed decisions. Um, and that might be, especially as freshmen and sophomores, that will also include um, just guidance on what classes they should add to their transcript, depending on what, what their college aspirations are. Um, it'll also, you know, um, have a, uh, we'll also discuss testing. Um, 
what it means, what you need to try to have, depending on where you're going to school. Um, and then the little detailed nuanced questions like test optional, what does that mean exactly? Um, what kinds of things are admissions offices considering when they're reading transcripts and reading profiles and considering student athletes for um, admission during the application process. There's no handbook for this anywhere. Um, the, the, the recruiting process and the college application process is, is very complex. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, every individual has their own wants and needs and desires, but admissions offices at every college are weighing your wants and needs and desires with your transcript and your test scores and then comparing and contrasting that to everybody else's wants and needs and desires and their test scores and their, and their transcripts. So um, just making sure everybody understands how, how complex this puzzle is um, really helps in the end to, to sort of make sure everybody has a really positive experience. In addition to working individually with the players and the parents and the teams, um, I also do a lot of talking and, and sort of just relationship building with college coaches. Um, just on the sideline, even if they're not looking at anyone specific, um, just answering any general questions, being somebody who can give them a quick answer um, about a kid, you know, where she's from, what she's interested in. Um, do you think she wants an urban school or do you think she wants a, a, a rural school? Um, and then I can sort of relay that to, to our players as needed. Um, a lot of coaches, uh, particularly during COVID, but I think that trend is gonna continue. They wanna know about kids as people as well, um, not just lacrosse players. And I really try in my role, in addition to coaching my team to just be on the sideline with the 23s, the 24s, um, soon the 25s, just to start getting to know them um, and, and sort of know, you know how they vibe, what makes them tick, what they're interested in, um, their, their general demeanor. Um, it's, it's really helpful to have that broad depth picture of every student athlete that we have in our program. So when the time comes, I can basically help everyone save time, be efficient with their communication. Um, and, that, and that's for the player and the, and the families and, um, and the college coaches as well. I mean, there's, there's not a lot of time. Everybody's super busy. The, the recruiting season is very frantic. Um, there's barely enough hours in the day to, to communicate with the people that you want to communi communicate to. So it's really important to be able to help both the players and the coaches narrow their list down, really narrow their focus as, as they go through the process and they get closer and closer to that junior junior year, junior summer and fall. Um, so that when when it's time to make a decision, everybody sort of has their head screwed on straight and you know what what we're what we're looking at and where we're gonna go from here. Um, but it's it's an enriching experience all around. Um, obviously just being in the coaching world for for a long time. Um, I've I've built a lot of relationships with colleagues. Um, and I I feel that you know, both myself and, and our organization have, have a great reputation for being trusted um, in our opinions and, and being honest about, about the players that we have and, and, and what they're looking for. Um, I also think people like us, hopefully. I think we're, we're kind of fun to be around and, and uh, we, we, let, we have a good time on the sideline um, during games, even though we're, we're doing something serious. It's also really important that it's fun for the players. You can't play well if you're not having a good time. Um, so we, we focus on, on sort of developing the whole person, really keeping it positive, um, but also teaching them about that this is serious and that the, it is going to take a lot of your time and a lot of your, you're going to have to have some mental fortitude to get through. Um, but I think at the end of the day, um, we're able to sort of connect with everybody, uh, which is, which is great, really positive. One of the things we're really proud of um, at Snipers is our ability to offer um, my services free of cost. It's included in every player's registration um, fee and, and there's no additional monies um, paid to use um, the recruiting services. And in fact, we re require everybody to work with me. It's not like you're not going rogue on your own and, you know, email and coaches willy nilly and every single player, in addition to each team meeting that we have. We have at least two a year with each team. Um, every individual player will also have an initial meeting with me that will involve um, setting up 
um, two documents for them. Number one is a, um, a Google sheet with their working list of schools, as well as their GPA, their test scores, the classes that they're taking. It's really important for me to have that information on hand. So if I'm speaking to a coach, I can immediately pull it up and, and learn, well, you know, does she have any APs on her schedule? Do you know what her test scores are? I can immediately pull that, that information up and, and get that to a coach. Um, and the second document is a, uh, a Google doc that each player uses to draft any email that they are sending to a coach. Once it's in their draft, they shoot me a text. Hey, coach, can you read this? I would like to send it out to the following schools. I read it. I use the suggestion function to make suggestions on how they should edit or change it. Um, very few of those need to be made since most kids and we encourage everybody to use the, the, the email templates. Um, and then I say, all good, send out. Um, and then they get those out to, to their respective schools that they're looking to communicate with. Um, additionally, everybody, any further conversations with, with individuals will be just about their individual process, who they're talking to, what camps they should attend, um, telling me about different experiences that, that they've had at, at college events, um, me, sharing general interests that, that coaches have shared with us um, at, at the D1 level. Um, and th that's always a nice kind of validation for players to know that, okay, I'm, people are noticing me. Um, obviously it's just general interest. It's not, you know, we want to commit you right now, but I think it goes a long way to sort of give the kids some positive reinforcement and, and just indicate to them that they're doing the right thing. Um, and then anytime the kid wants to reach out to me, I am available. Everyone has my cell phone. They will either text or call or email. And I just try to respond to everybody as quickly as possible. A lot of things are time sensitive. Um, if a coach is asking for a transcript or if a coach is um, emailing or calling with an offer, um, the, the sort of deadline dates, the, the July 1st date for, for division three and then the September 1st date for, for D1s are very hectic. Um, a lot of moving parts, as I said before, but um, I think it really goes a long way to have a dedicated person that they can call to get a little, a little help, um, a little guidance. Um, hopefully, by the time they reach the end of their process, they're able to, to they they know what they want and they're able to navigate the 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 waters, um, basically autonomously. But we are always involved. We want to know exactly what's going on with every kid, just so we can we know and we can keep track and we can help anybody at any time. Um, additionally, we also give, we encourage all the parents to be on the team calls. Um, we also encourage uh, the parents to be on individual calls when they're able. Um, what we do not encourage is parents to be reaching out to us independently of their children. Um, the, the communication between the parent and the child is more important than anything else. If there is no communication in the household, it always goes badly. Um, so anytime we're communicating with the, with the kid, we also, hey, is your mom around? Is your dad around? Can they jump on the call? Um, just so both parties are hearing my words or having a conversation that, that involves everybody's sort of um, opinions and questions so that the process is just healthy moving forward and it just removes a lot of the stress um, from the overall experience. 